Hello, in this video I'll take you through Design VAT Sales Rep Commission Tracker. Now this template is designed for product based businesses that have sales representatives that help them sell their retail products to customers. So it enables you create a database to store all of your sales reps. It enables you to track your daily sales and link sales transactions to your sales rep. It enables you to track your product inventory so at any point in time you know the balance of each product in your store. And most importantly, it automatically calculates commission per sales rep. It allows you to define a commission table either by value or by quantity. And on a weekly basis, you can be able to generate a commission summary to be able to see the total amount due to each of your sales rep. So it equally has other awesome reports, but in this video, I'm going to go through all the functionalities. Now on the screen, I've opened up the template and it's powered at Microsoft Excel. So you need to have Excel, a version from 2013, installed on your computer. Now once you open up the template, you arrive at the dashboard and this holds three thumbnails to navigate to the three major sections of the template. We have the sales rep section where you add your new sales reps, the sales section where you enter your daily product sales, and the report section which holds multiple automatically generated reports. Now in this video, I'm going to go through all the sections starting with the first. Now to open a particular section, you simply click. So clicking on the thumbnail, for instance, sales reps takes us to that section of the template. Now all sections in this template have an identical formatting. In the upper left hand corner, we have the section title and this tells the user at any point in time the section you're currently on. So notice it says sales rep information. So the user knows that this is where you list all of your sales reps. So this is where the database of your sales reps is going to be. To the right of this, we have a button. This is used to delete existing sales rep. Above this, we have our navigation pane and this is made up of several labels. Now each label is a button to navigate to a particular section of the template. So notice we have the product section, sales reps, and so on. To navigate to a particular section, you simply click on the label, for instance, products, and it takes you to that section of the template. I'm going to go back to the sales rep section. Now below the button here, we have our data table, and this is where you're going to list all of your sales reps. You notice the attributes at the top. These are the values you're supposed to supply for each sales rep. Now to add a new sales rep, you simply double click below the sales rep's name field and type in the name. So let's assume our first sales rep is Rose Random. Once you're done typing, you can make use of the tab key on your keyboard to move to the next field to supply the phone number. So pressing the tab key, you notice it moves me to that field and Excel will automatically insert a line telling me that it has stored this sales rep. I go ahead and enter the phone number, make use of my tab key, and I type in the email address tab key and lastly I type in the contact address. So the outstanding balance field is automatically generated by the template. You notice right now it automatically says zero meaning that I owe this sales rep rose random nothing. So this is what will tell you at any point in time the total outstanding commission for this particular sales rep and it's automatically generated by the template. So the last attribute I'm supposed to supply is the address. So let's assume that's the address. So now I've successfully added my first sales rep. I've entered the name, the phone number, the email, and the last field is the contact address. The outstanding balance is automatically generated by the template. To add another sales rep, you simply repeat the process. You click below the last entry, you double click, type in the sales rep's name, make use of the tab key on your keyboard to move to the next field where you enter the phone number and the email address. Once you're done, you make use of your tab key and then you can go ahead and type the residential address. Now, the fields are optional. So for instance, if I don't know the address, I can leave it blank and I can always update it in the future. I've successfully added my two sales reps. Now I'm just going to add a third sales rep, generic phone number, email address, and the last field for data entry, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank. So now I have three sales reps. Now each row represents data of a particular sales rep. So a, a row represents a record. The first row is Rose Random's record, second row John Random's record, and the third row Mary Random's record. And you keep repeating this process to add additional sales rep. So that pretty much covers this section. To add, you double click, type in values. Now to delete a particular sales rep, you make use of the delete sales rep button at the top. It's a two-step process. Step number one, you need to tell the template which row do you want to delete. So if I want to delete the third row, I need to click on any cell in that row. So I can choose to click on the sales rep cell, phone number, email address, it really doesn't matter so far as I'm on that particular row. Once you're on the row, you notice a border on the cell, you simply click on delete and the template is going to ask you a confirmation message. Are you sure you want to delete this particular sales rep and it's going to tell you the rep's name and the phone number. If you do, you click on yes, you notice the template will automatically delete that particular sales rep. So that's a summary of the first section. 
This is the database where you store all of your sales representatives. Next, we move to the product section. And to do that, you simply click on the label products and it takes us to that section of the template. Now you notice the section has the same formatting. In the upper left hand corner, we have the section title. And this tells you that this is where you list all of your product information. So like a database for your products. To the right of this, we have two buttons. The delete to delete an existing product. The add expense button, which takes us to the expense section to track your daily expenses. Above this, we have a navigation pane. And below the two buttons here, we have our data table where all products will be listed. Now in this section, there's only one data entry field. The user is expected to supply only the product name. The other columns to the right, that's the additional four columns, balance in stock, purchase date, last cost price, and last selling price will be automatically generated by the template. So all you need to do is just to list only products in your inventory. So I'm just going to enter generic names like product one. You notice once I press enter, the template will automatically insert a row, tell me my balance is zero because I haven't added any purchases for this product. I repeat the process entering all the products in my database. I'm just going to head and enter three products. So each row represents products. The first product, one, two, three. Columns to the right, so the four columns stacked to the right, will be automatically generated by the template. The moment you tell the template that you made additional product purchases, the template will automatically increase your balance in stock, updates the last purchase date, last cost price, and then the last selling price. So we've covered the sales rep section and the product section. The next thing we need to do before we can make sales is to buy products. Whenever you buy new products to your stock, you need to tell the templates the products you bought, when you bought it, and the cost in which you purchased that product. To do that, you simply go to the expense section. So you notice we have two buttons here. The delete product is used to delete an existing product. You simply click on the product, click on delete, and then you click on yes. That's to delete a product. To add expenses, you simply click on the second button, and it takes you to the daily expenses section. So now we're in the expense information section. So as a business, you're going to spend money continually to maintain your business. There are two types of expenses that this template supports. Current expenses, like your advertising, salaries, utilities, and other recurrent spending, and your product restock. So whenever you buy additional products to sell, that is equally an expense you documented here. So you notice the label in the upper left tells you this is where you enter your expense information. Right at this, we have three buttons. The first, to enter your recurrent expenses. The second, to enter whenever you buy new products for resale. The third, to delete any existing expense. Above this, we have our navigation pane, and below the three buttons, we have our table where your daily expenses will be listed. Now, first, I'm going to demonstrate recurrent expenses. So I'm going to click on the first button, pops up an Excel form, and I'm, all I need to do is to supply values to the white portion of the form. So Excel forms provide a simpler way to store data to this table here. For sections where we have more than five columns, entered in or we created an Excel form to simplify data entry. But for sections like the product section where it's only one column, and you manually type into the cells. So the first thing I need to do is to tell the template, when did I make this expense? So let's just backdate to February. So let's assume that on the 6th of February, 2019, we paid for advertising on Facebook. Next, you indicate the expense type, which in this case would be advertising. The template supports over eight expense categories. You notice that we've pre-populated it with the common expense types like advertising, office expenses, rent, and so on. But later on in the video, I'm going to show you how you can modify these values you can add new categories or delete existing values. Now, one thing I need to point out is the date field. Now, the format of the dates depends on the settings on your computer. So mine is the day, month, year. That's why I entered the day as the sixth, the month as the second, and the year as 2019. If the settings on your computer is the month, day, year, kindly use the format here. So this solution will work with the settings on your computer by default. So this is my setting. That's why the date is in this particular format. Next, I indicate the expense category, so advertising and marketing. Use of my tab key to move to the next field, or I can click with my mouse. Enter the expense detail. So this is just what exactly did I spend on. Facebook advertising is pretty broad, so I can here be more specific and say, for instance, Facebook ads. I can even go ahead and specify the product, product one, if I want to go into detail. So I did Facebook ads for my first product. Next, I enter the unit price. So let's assume that I used 1,000 and I ran the adverts for 10 days. So the template will automatically calculate the total price multiplying the two together. So the units multiplied by the quantity, excuse me. If I change this to five, you notice the balance reduces. If I change this to 2,000, the balance increases. This is automatically generated multiplying the unit price with the respective quantity. 
So I'm done supplying all the values. I simply click on enter and it's going to add the expense to my database. So we should see it listed on the first row. So you notice all the attributes that I supplied. The expense date, the type, the details about the expense, the quantity, unit cost, and the total price. So what I'm telling the template is that in the month of February, I spent a total of 10000 on advertising. And this is additional details pertaining to that expense. So that's the first type of expense that the template supports. And as I mentioned earlier on, there are different categories. So you can add when you pay salaries, office rent, and so on. The advantage of tracking your expenses is later on in the video, one of the awesome reports is a profit and loss statement. You can be able to see stacked on a monthly basis the total amount you spend on recurrence, on cost of goods sold, and then the overall profit on a monthly basis. Now the next type of expense we're going to cover is your product restock. So you simply make use of the second button, works similar. Once you click, it pops up the form, but the major difference you notice is that under expense type, we've already automatically affixed product restock, so you can change this is the expense type that is locked in. All you need to do is to supply the other attributes. So first, the date you made the purchase, I'm equally going to make this the 16th of February, so 10 days after I paid for advertising. So I need to tell the template which product did I buy. This is a drop-down list. It's been set to list all products from your product section. So if you have 20 products here, they'll be automatically listed in this drop-down list. So I'm going to go ahead and select the first product. Let's assume that I bought it for 150. I bought 20 units, so the unit cost price is 150. The quantity I purchased is 20, so the total price, which multiplies the two together, will be 3,000. Now, the last thing I need to supply, which was not for our recurrent expense, is the selling price. So you need to tell the seller that when you're selling this product, what do you plan to sell it for? So I bought it for 150. Let's assume I want to sell it for 300. So I'm marking up the price by 100%. This is the selling price. This is the cost price. Then I click on enter. So now I've added my product restock. So this is the particular date, the expense type, and details of the transaction. Now, the moment you enter a product restock, the template will automatically update information in the product section. So if we go back to the product section, we should now see for product one, the most recent price we purchased it, the balance in stock should have increased by 20, and then the selling price should be 300. So those three attributes should be extracted from here and displayed in the product section. To confirm that, we simply click on products, and you will notice the first row. The product name, now the balance has increased increased 20 because the template has recognized a restock in the expense section. And it equally gives you important information like the most recent date you made a purchase, the most recent price you bought it, and what you plan to sell it for. These are dynamic fields. So if I add another purchase now, you notice these will automatically update. So just note the values. So 150 and the 16th of February 2019. 20. So if I go back to my expenses and I add another restock in the month of March, you notice that those values will automatically update it. So let's quickly do that. Recall I went to the expense section. I clicked on the second button, product restock. The date, I'm going to change this to March. I'm going to select the product, product one. Let's assume in March, I was able to get it for 170. I bought only 10. And the price is that I'm going to sell it for is the same 300. Once I click enter, it's going to store that transaction. Now we have three transactions. So the most recent purchase of this product is in March and not February anymore. If we go back to the product section, we should see March listed. So the balance has increased to 30, which is 20 plus 10. But the most recent date that I made a purchase is in March. This is the cost price and this is the selling price. That's how dynamic the section is. All sections are interconnected. So I'm going to do a second demonstration for product two. I'm going to go to my expense section. I'm going to click on the product restock in the expense information section. And I'm going to make this January. Now, why I'm doing this is just to show you the auto sort functionality. So the functionalities have been set, excuse me, to automatically sort your transactions in chronological order. So this is going to be January. So that means when I store this, it should be the first row on the table. I'm going to select product two. Let's assume this is 250. We purchased 10 units and we're going to sell it each for 400. Once you supply all the values, you click on enter tells you the expense has been added, and now you notice it on the first row. So we've added functionalities to automatically store or sort the transactions in chronological order. So the oldest transaction will be at the top, the most recent transaction will be at the bottom. So that way it's just easy when you're scrolling through your information. And now that we've added values for product two, if we go back to our product section, we should see the quantity increased by 10, and the unit cost should be 250. So going back to the product, you notice the values on the second row. The quantity of 10, January, 
when we backdate it, the unit cost, and what we plan to sell it for. So that's a summary of the first three sections. First, we've covered the sales rep section, which is a database where you list all of your sales rep information. Recall, we just double clicked, supplied the name, use of the tab key to move to the next field, and we supply four attributes here. The sales rep's name, the phone number, the email, and the contact address. The outstanding balance, as we said earlier, will be automatically generated by the template. Next, we moved on to the product section, and here we listed all products in our inventory. We listed three products. You can always expand this in future. And all you need to list in the product section is just the product name, only one attribute. The template will automatically generate the balance in stock, the last purchase date, last cost price, price and the last selling price. And the third section we went to is the expense section, where you enter your product expenses and also your recurrent expenses. We simply clicked on the second button in the product information section. Here, we listed all of our products. We covered the two buttons here, the first for your recurrent expenses, and the second for your direct cost, which is the cost of the goods that you're selling. And lastly, to delete, it works the same. You simply click on any cell in the row. The row to delete. So if I want to delete this last row, this is the row here. This row is made up of multiple cells. This cell one, two, three, and so on. So if I want to delete this row, I just need to click on any cell in the row. So I can be on the expense type cell. You notice the border around the cell. Once I click on delete, the template is going to pop up a confirmation message. So asking me if I'm sure I want to delete this transaction and equally telling me the transaction type and the date. If I do, I click yes. If I don't, I click no. That's a summary of the first three sections of the template. Next, we move to the commission section. Now, this is where you define the commission for your sales reps. To do that, you simply click on the label commission, and it takes us to that section of the template. 